Well, Alan had it right when he said that it was a good thing Andrew made me listen to my um, tapes before I, le I let you put them on. Well, you know, now I'm trying to make sure that I speak a little clearer and I'm watching things, but last week there was a show that I wanted to watch and it started at 9 o'clock. Well, it was a little, I don't know what exactly time it was that that sermon started, but I'm telling you, it was way too long for me. So I told, I told Andrew, I, got, I, I missed half my show that I wanted to watch because I had to listen to myself. And I said, I need to shorten these up a little bit. So if you think this, and Bill says, amen. I got a round of applause there. So... Um, Anyway, um, it's good to be here this morning, and I um, have something that I have taken out of uh, Psalms this morning, and we are going to read, if you have your Bibles, open up to Psalms 124. It's a very short one, it only has eight verses in it. I'm going to read it to you. We're going to focus on verse 1, which says, if it had not been, if it had not been the Lord who was on our or was on our side okay starting in verse 1 Psalms 124 if it had not been the Lord who was on our side now may Israel say if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us then the waters had overwhelmed us the stream had gone over our soul then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let's just pray. Father God, I just pray that you take your word and this word from, this, from these verses, Lord, and put them into our hearts and into our minds. And then help us to remember them. And, and, and when we have those times, Father, I thank you for that. Amen. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. And um, the focus, like I said, in verse 1, um, what I, when I looked at this and, and then what I, what I thought about is that David, who it says that David was the writer in this psalm. And so he had experienced some time, and we really don't know, we can't put our finger on what exactly, what incident he was talking about, but he had experienced some great deliverance, which God had provided for him and his people. We don't know what that experience was, but whatever it was, it affected David. It impacted him and he remembered it, and he was not about to forget it. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. And here the word Lord is, is and in, when you look it up in the Hebrew, there's all different kinds of things that the Lord can mean, but this just means Jehovah. And when I look this up again, Jehovah means the self. It's, this is what the Jewish people called God. When you hear Jehovah or Jehovah, we always put the J in it. Um, that just is that was their word for God. So Jehovah, but it meant the self-existent, eternal God. The self-existent, eternal God. And so David was looking at the goodness of God, the goodness of Jehovah God, and making a way of escape for him. And you guys know that there are times when we ourselves need a way of escape. David recalls in his mind that time that he had some troubles. And he remembers the troubles. And we can identify with that too, can't, can't we? As we recall times and situations in our mind or in our lives when we had trouble. He remembered the hopelessness that he felt 
the helplessness of the situation. The helplessness that he had. And he remembers what could have been. What could have been. Verses 2 and 3 he kind of tells us, he gives us a little bit of idea what situation he's talking about. And again, we really don't know for sure a specific time. If it had not been the Lord who was in on our side, he said, when men rose up against us. So he's telling us that much, or he's reminding the people that much, when men rose up against us. And verse 3 says, when uh, they had... That then, that blah, blah. No, that's very you understood that, didn't you? That's scary. <laughs> then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. So he is saying, okay, I remember this time, Lord. I remember this time that if you had not been on my side, when those men rose up in anger or up in anger, and wrath against us, against our people in that situation, they would have swallowed us up and it would have been quick. And then he said, then the waters that overwhelmed us had gone over our soul. But you know what we would say in, in today's life or maybe in our minds, we would, we're, we would be saying the same thing if it had not been for the Lord. I don't know how much longer I could have went on if he hadn't stepped into this situation if it hadn't been the Lord who was on our side I don't know I felt like I was drowning I felt like I was under the water and I couldn't get up I felt like there was no way out and so David remembers this he remembers the situation and he remembers how he felt and he remembers that it just seemed like nothing was going to work out. And that he wants us to remember. And he remembered then as he wrote these words down. And he reminded how it could have been. You know, now I'm guilty, and probably many of us are, that we think sometimes on what might be. And that is called what? Worry. And we know that worry is sen senseless. And God does not want us to worry. But I say of all the things that, um, that we need to work on is, is learning that ability not to worry about what could have been or what might be, but to deal with what actually we're facing today. I... I I'm guilty of that. I am guilty of that. Not excessively like some people who, you know, they can't, their minds are so full of worry that that is all that can get in there is worrying about the things that will happen. But David is remembering this situation that he had when it looked like there was no way out. And then he kind of tells us what it could have been. You know, they... There was no way out for us. And he says if the Lord had not been on our side, if it had not been Jehovah himself, the great Jehovah, in his infinite power that took care of us, then our enemies would have overpowered us. They would have overpowered us if it had not been his care for us. And so then what he's saying is God is good. Amen? Amen? God is good. God, he said, what David said was, God was our power. God was our power. Not that he gave us power. God was our power. Now listen, he was saying God took our part. He took our part. God picked up our cause. He appeared for us and he defended our cause. God is a defender. He is a defender of his people. Do you know that? Do you know that he will defend his people? 
verses 6 and 7 says he rescued us. He rescued us. David says he rescued us. Like a lamb out of the jaws of a beast. And so I can get this visual of a little lamb being snatched up by a, a lion. Yes. Trapped in the jaws of that beast. And David says that's what we were. We were like that little lamb trapped in the jaws of a bear or a beast or a lion. That's how we were. Oh, Israel, I want you to remember what God has done for you. That is what we were. That's what, how we were. He says, like a bird. <coughs> our soul is escaped. Verse 7 says, our soul is escaped as a bird. Out of the snare of the fowlers, the snare is broken and we are escaped. Like a bird, like a little bird, like a sparrow, we were rescued. Out of the snare of the fowlers, out of the trap, the trap that has been set, like a net to catch a bird with this big net and the bird's not able to get out. And the fowlers are only the ones who set the trap. They're the ones who set the trap, like a hunter's trap. And David says, remember, remember, that's how we were. We were trapped. We were like that little lamb in, in, the, in the midst of a jaw. We were like those birds. And God's people have, had taken on that snare and they were unable to help themselves. And David says, but we are escaped. We are escaped. And he blesses the Lord in verse um, 6. He said, blessed be the Lord that we are not, that we are escaped. We are escaped from these things. The snare is broken. And it's God we have to remember what I want you to know this morning is God may always makes a way of escape for us. No matter how hopeless the situation is, God makes a way of escape. David reminds us from whence cometh our help in this psalm, Psalm 124. He said on verse 8, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Where would we be? Where would we be? You're not unlike David. You can think of things in your mind. You can recall situations. You can recall times in your life. And you can sit here today and shake your head and say, Yes, if the Lord had not been on my side, Amen. I don't know where I could have been. I want you to notice one thing. Put verse 1 back up. If it had not been the Lord who was on, what does that say? Our side. I want to point that out to you because, see, this was personal for David, but it was not just for David. It was for Israel. It was for all of, his pe all of the people, and it's, it's for us today. It includes us. And I think we need to realize that, and we have to be able to recognize that the Lord is on my side. Can you say that? The Lord is on my side. Can you recall situations? Yes, you can. You can recall situations that in times of, of well, we remember times when we're scared and we remember, we remember times of danger. 
specifically. And there's probably all of us that can remember times when we thought if it hadn't have been for the Lord, I don't know what would have happened that day. Right? I mean, just the times that uh, Kevin alone has been working out on the highway and been in danger of what could have happened if the Lord had not been on his side. See, he works, you know, he works for the state and he works on traffic lights. And a few years ago, he was up in a bucket uh, working on a traffic light. And, uh, of course, he, he didn't always obey all the rules and he didn't have his safety harness on, which probably would have killed him if he did. And a semi came right underneath him, knocked him out of the bucket, and he was on top of the, the trailer of the semi going down the road. Wow. Yeah, and uh, thank God that the partner working with him was an a old Navy SEAL and could run and wasn't an old man. And he run down and run that semi driver down and got out <coughs> and chased him down and made him stop. Said, hey, you got a man on the back of your trailer. Of course, Kevin got rode up because he didn't have his harness on. <laughs> There's been times in your life when you can remember the, the years at your age when, when you were going down the road and you don't know what saved you. You don't know why it wasn't you. You don't know why it wasn't you. And you know, then the people that are hurt like these two people that we talked about this morning in that motorcycle wreck. Okay, they're hurt, but see, the Lord is on their side. So they're not without hope, and they're not without help. The Lord is on their side. You have to pick that up. I think we need to pick that up. And, 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 and uh, when we leave here today, just remind yourself and recall the situations in your life and tell the Lord about them. See, I can tell the Lord that. I can say, hey Lord, I remember that time I was down there in Tennessee and I, I came home and I did, I told Kevin, I told the Lord that day and I told Amanda that day and I told Kevin that day, every day I live beyond this day is my life extended. Because I should have either back into the semi at about 80 mile an hour or went off the side of a mountain. That's how close it was. And then when I got, I don't know how. I don't, you, you ever hear that country song that said, Lord, take the wheel? I believe the Lord took hold of that wheel and, and steered me right around that. I slowed down a little bit. He took it from me more than one time. Yeah. If the Lord hadn't been on your side, right. where would you be? And if he hadn't been on your side, <laughs> And if he hadn't been on your side, you'd have been raised in an orphanage. My daddy got to the orphanage, turned to go down the lane. He was taking me there, but they drove me to it. And they had, they had a lane. It was in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, about twice as far as from here to the road, maybe a little further, to their building. And daddy came off the road into their kind of a sweeping drive to put you into the lane. And just as he was starting to turn down that lane, and of course, I was scared to death, but he didn't know it. And I was praying, didn't realize I was praying, but I was, trying to think back on it. Oh, really? All the way down, I don't know, seven, eight, somewhere in there. And uh, please let him take me home. Please let him take me home, you know? And uh, at the last second, he shook his head and said, I can't do this. We're right. You know. We all know, don't we? If it had not been the Lord that was on our side. See, I had good parents, I think. I had wonderful parents. My mom always said, no matter whatever happens, we're always on your side. And how many people know that a mom and parents, you're always on the side of your children. Your children can do wrong. You still love them. But you still love them. And you're I always... Love you love them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's happened to me before. You know. Uh, sometimes I think that, you know. I... I the, you may not like the way they're acting. 
And you may not like what they're doing, but it has nothing to do with love. That's right. And you're always on their side. Absolutely. And you never stop being on their side. And um, that's I, 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 I'm glad that we have a God that sees beyond all that we see mm -hmm. and go to a little boy seven years old and hear the prayers in your heart and deliver you out of the snare of the fowler, out of being trapped in, a, in an orphanage and separated from your family. He's a good God. David says he is a good God. Seemed like David was using this remembrance or this recollection of this situation. And he was remembering that so that he could get through what he had to get through that day. And so we have learned to do that also, have we not? Or we need to practice that. See, David was saying, don't you remember when this happened? And I remember when this happened. I remember it. Because sometimes we have to be able to do that, don't we? To get through what we're going through today. Today. The situation that we are going through. This situation in our life. Whatever it is. We can look back. Bill, just like you can look back. And you, sometimes we don't understand what we're going through now. Or exactly what it all it entails. And we don't know which way to go or what to do. And we feel like sometimes, what am I supposed to do? How, what am I supposed to do? And what can I do? And, and, and then, you, then despair takes over. But I can remember when, I can remember when, Lord, how do we say you never failed me yet? You've never failed me yet. And I know that you took me through that situation. Then you're going to take me through this one. See, sometimes we have to talk positive to ourselves. That the Lord has done this. He's never failed me yet. He's, we're going to get through this. We're going to make it. Because the Lord is on my side. He's on my side. See, I know that because he's been on my side before. Right? We know that every different situation, whether it be sickness, whether it be family issues, whether it be injuries, whether wherever it be a broken heart, whenever we have different situations in our life, sometimes, I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes I just say, Lord, I, I have to give this to you because I don't seem... I have no understanding of what comes next or what to do or what step to take or what not to do. I don't know if I'm thinking right. I don't know if I'm doing right. Is this a mistake? And then I just say, hey, Lord, I know. You're on my side. See, when he's on my side, guess who else's side he's on? He's on Kevin because we family, right? He's on Amanda's. Because she's family, see? If he's on my side, he's on her side. And I got five little grandkids back there. Or six. Amanda? Five? Okay, we got one missing this morning. Well, we got a lot missing. Guess what? He's on my side. The Lord. See, I claim that. I'm claiming that. I know the Lord's on my side. The Lord is on my side. He's on my side. He's on their side. See, he's on their side. They're my children. They're the seed of my seed. And he made a promise to me some however many years ago that he would bless my seed and the seed of my seed. He promised that. He said they would grow and that they would believe in him. And I believe that. And you know what? I'm glad he's on my side. Aren't you? I am glad. I am so glad, and I like to remember it. David had to remember the things that he had been through that the Lord brought him through to help him get through whatever he was dealing with that day. 
he had to learn to have this unquestioning trust in the power and the watchfulness of the Lord. See, many years ago, uh, there were times when I would say to the Lord, Can't you see me? Can't you see me? Don't, don't you see me? I, how, how can you just leave me like this? I'm hurting. I'm hurting and I, I don't know what to do. And we learn from that because I realized later that every step of the way, everything, that he was on my side. He was on the side of my husband, the side of my children, the side of my family. And he's on your side. Amen? He's on your side. You say, what's that mean? That means if there's a battle going on, guess who's fighting it for you? He'll fight it for us. He's, he's a God of battles. He loves to show his power to his people by getting them out of things that they can't get themselves out of. Sometimes we get ourselves in so deep and he waits till we get in so deep, right? And then he pulls us right out of it. I think of Peter. I always think of Peter when, when he said, Lord, if that's you walking on the water, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. And Peter just steps right out of the boat and starts walking to him and then fear sets in. All right? That's happened to all of us. He starts to sink. He's going under. The waters have overwhelmed him. He's caught. He's trapped. He's a goner. I'm sure it didn't cross his mind. I'm going to drown. This is it. And that hand of Jesus reached right down there and pulled him right up out of the water. The Lord is on your side. Oh, well, Jesus should never fear. It doesn't matter. The Lord is on your side. Well, I did this. And I did that, and I don't know. And it doesn't matter. The Lord is on your side if you're one of his children. Well, sometimes I, I, sometimes I don't have enough faith. It doesn't matter. You've got enough faith because he says all it takes is enough as a grain of mustard seed. He's on your side. He's made it easy for you. Well, you don't know sometimes, Lord, I just doubt. It doesn't matter. He's on your side. He'll give you what you need. He's on our side. Look at what David said in Psalm 46 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and God is our strength. A very present help in trouble. He is present in times of trouble. God, our God, doesn't want to run away from trouble. There's no trouble that he can't take care of. And he is present with us even in our times of trouble. Even when we're weak. Even when... We struggle to keep our confidence in Him built up. He's present to help. He is our refuge and our strength. And we can go to Him with anything. We can go to Him with... He is watchful. He is aware. He can see us. We don't have to tell Him, Oh yeah, Lord, by the way, I just want you to know that in case you didn't know I'm going through this, He knows. He knows. He knows, and He's there. And we need to learn to, to bless Him as David did, because David said, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord for what He's brought us through. Thank you, Lord, for what You've brought me through. Thank you, Lord, for what You've brought me through. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and how old are you, Bill? Me? Yeah. Now? Yeah. <laughs> He's so old he don't remember. Oh, he Eighty in August, seventy-three years ago, the Lord was on Bill's side. And seventy-three years have passed, and Bill still remembers what the Lord did for him on that day. Amen? Hard, 
nobody else. So I got to ask God to make my daddy turn it around. And my good. And that's the last minute he answered. You know, I have, have uh, been really amazed when these grandkids sit in church, they pick up more than we think they do. And so you think a seven-year-old, you know, our seven-year-olds in time of trouble, they're going to be, they've heard about that God, that Jesus, and they're going to ask for help in time of need. We must remember to bless him and thank him, thank him for all that he's done for us, for all that he's gotten us through. He's got us through a lot of things that we don't know about. Yes. That's, that's what it We'll find out someday. Yes. Can you look? Can you stop? Can you thank God all the things that you've got me through? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for getting me through that. And then recognize that he personally cares for us. So, Kevin, I can be mad at you. And that's okay. You deserve it. <laughs> but God is no respecter of persons. And guess what? When I'm mad at you, God's still on your side. Right? He'll protect, he'll protect Kevin for me. Amen. Yeah, he puts up an invisible shield around him. Because I can tell as, as soon as the invisible shield goes up around Kevin, he gets that blank look like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he can't hear me. It's like he can't see me. It's like I don't exist. And I know that God's done it because I can't get through that bubble. They're going to have a new show. I've seen a commercial on TV where these people are stuck in a dome. That's Kevin. It's like he's in the dome and he's in here and you're out there. He cares for you. He cares for you. There's no one else that can care for you personally as much as he does. I said something a couple weeks ago and I didn't mean it bad. But I felt bad about it later because I said something like this. You can tell me that you need prayer for a, search for a certain situation, and I care. But I'm telling you, I don't care like he does. Not like he does. He cares for us from the littlest thing to the biggest thing. From the smallest thing that we would ask him to do, that maybe even to the world would have no insignificance to the biggest thing. He's watchful for us. He's like our, he's like, uh, he cares for us. He, we need to learn to recognize um, his divine hand in all of our, in all of our life. He needs, <laughs> okay. That was Miley knocking on the window waving because I think she was making a trip to the restroom. <laughs> And uh, that just tickled me. His divine hand is with us. And he will provide a way when it seems like there is no way. He will provide a way when it seems like there is no way. And when there was no hope, or when there seems to be no hope, we put our hope in him. When we seem to have no strength, then when all strength is gone, then his strength, his strength takes over. We need to be able to say to him, Lord, you delivered me out of the snare of the fowls. You delivered me out of that. Lord, if you had not been on my side, where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? Where would you be? In sickness, in health, in life, in death, in our everyday life, and our families, the struggles that we have, the people that we know. If it wasn't that the Lord was on my side, sometimes I don't know if, if 
I think I would have freaked out and cracked up sometimes. But he keeps me almost stable. Almost. If he hadn't been on my side, I wouldn't be here. If he wouldn't have been on my side, I wouldn't be standing here in this church this morning. I wouldn't be in this pulpit. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? We're going to have special prayer for anyone who needs it. I believe Alan wants us to pray with him. And so um, we're going to do that right now. Alan, you want to come up? Does anyone else need special prayer? <coughs>